Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements about a game in about five minutes. And this is a crazy one that we have not covered this up to this point. Mage Knight, one of uh, my favorite game designs, a game that we've uh, played a billion times on the channel. It's one of Colin's favorite games of all time. So let's fix that blind spot and finally review this bad boy, this solo cooperative competitive adventure game with deck building and card play. And let's get to five things about Mage Knight. Starting with my number five point, and it's a pro for my taste, that's how the solo and cooperative opponent works and how quick it is to play. So in the base game, whenever the AI gets a turn, you just flip over three cards. Based on the color of the final card, you might flip over some more, and that's it. You get right back to your turn. It's really just acting as a timer that might end the round sooner than you would like. This can get slightly more complicated with some of the expansion content, like with Volcar, he's moving in different directions based on whichever cards you draw, but still, it is extremely fast to resolve. You get back back to your playing of the game as soon as possible. And even though some people might want a more complex AI, I think for the type of game and the focus on your own card play, this is an ideal way to handle it. Next, for my number four point, I'm looking at the game's modes and variety of scenarios. This is a mix, but that very much depends on what you get for the game and which versions you buy. So first of all, a big negative, at least for my taste, is the cooperative and competitive play. Your turn can take so long. There can be so much analysis paralysis as you try to figure out all the crazy combinations combos of your cards, we'll get to that later in the review, that <laughs> playing the game with more players can be an exercise in complete drudgery and slow play and frustration, unless you're all experts and can really play through quickly. And then also, if you just have the base game, almost every scenario is a competitive scenario. So you're pretty much stuck just playing the basic move out and kill city scenario, which is, don't get me wrong, very replayable because other things are varied, but doesn't have much variety in the rules. But this mix might become a full pro if you get the ultimate edition, if you have the Lost Legion expansion to use Volcar, if you have the Shades of Tesla, which added tons of scenarios, especially for solo co-op. My number three point is back to a full pro for my taste, but with some caveats, and that's the expiration and movement in the game. But some caveats first. It can be annoying to remember what all of the sites do. You have these uh, reference cards, and they're double-sided, so figuring out, oh wait, where's the card that has this kind of terrain on it? <laughs> it can be frustrating if you haven't played in a while or are learning the game for the first time and don't know what they all do. And also, not every adventure gamer is going to love how challenging it can be to just like move around and get stuff done with all the varying terrain costs and things changing when you go into night. And having to use like all these different cards and combos just to like walk a few steps in front of yourself, that's not going to be the favorite of every type of gamer. But getting past that, the variety and how the map comes out, the cleverness you can feel in moving well through the space and like efficiently making your way through the terrain, uh, deciding which sites you want to interact with and the huge variety in your experience from that and how you level up and how you grow is super exciting for me and does make the game even with the base conquest scenarios feel quite varied play to play. My number two point is also a pro, a huge one, and that's how you level up and power up throughout the game. But a quick caveat first, this game is technically a deck builder. You start with a basic deck and you will add more cards to it, but you really don't tend to add a ton of cards. So if you're looking for that normal deck building thing where you're like adding one to two cards every single turn and culling cards from your deck, you're not really going to get it here. But putting that aside, everything about the leveling up here is amazing because there are so many options, so many combos, so much variety in what you have? Will you add more advanced actions to your deck? Will you dig deeply into spells? Will you get artifacts by burning down monasteries? And add in the skill tokens, which are highly varied between characters, and you get very different mixes of them from drawing them each game. And which units are you going to hire to back you up, and how will you change them out, and how long will you keep them before upgrading them? All of which ties deeply into the reputation track, and whether you keep it high by helping out the people, but maybe not leveling up in the way you want, or whether you go full-on villain, burn down every monastery, and artifact it up. It gives the game great variety. It's huge fun. Changing up different characters and strategies feels super rewarding. Just one of the best parts of the game for me. And that number two ties right into my number one thing about Mage Knight, my favorite part of the game, although it's not going to be for everybody. And that is the incredibly tactical and nuanced card play, especially in big combats. Because it starts out pretty simple. You have a hand of cards. You can play them for different abilities. You can play them sideways to make them little weak wilds to boost things. So you have tons of flexibility in your choices. But oh wait, let's add in some mana dice and some mana crystals because you can power every single card up and suddenly all the calculus of what you can do with your hand changes. 
is. And oh, then you got some of those units I mentioned, and you can activate them for different effects and abilities. And oh, they can use the mana crystals and dice too. And don't forget about your skills, and you can build up to these huge spell effects. It's just wild, especially when you add in the enemy powers and abilities, and they all combo together. It is a brain burner like none other. And if you like it, it's the best thing in the world. So yeah, overall, no surprise that I love this one as a design. Vlada Chavadal is one of my favorite designers of all time, and this is one of his masterworks, in my opinion. You might want to check this one out if you like crunchy card play decisions, if you like adventure games with some meat in them and great leveling up. But on the other hand, you might want to avoid this one if you don't like Brain Burn, because that is the name of the game. And like I already said, it's not a big recommend, at least for my taste, if you're going to play it competitive or cooperative. I think the downtime will just crush your soul. And if you want to see the game in action, we have like 50,000 playthroughs. Colin's done so many, and we'll probably have some new ones for the Apocalypse Dragon expansion when that comes out, so more to come. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.